Hey, how's it going? I'm Isla Golden and welcome to my vlog. Alright, okay, so last time I said this was going to be another story time session. <laughs> Don't really know what else to call it. Um, I've had a little trouble trying to work out exactly what theme I kind of want to go with this time. I keep sort of jumping back and forth between like several different options. Um, trying to think of so, you know, something very definite, very focused to sort of talk about, not sort of wander all over the place. Um, so because I've mentioned it a few times in the last few vlogs, I think I want to talk about some of my memories from doing baton twirling um, and what I sort of kind of feel like I gained from from doing that when I was when I was little. Because I do feel like I gained something from it, <laughs> even if it wasn't like a huge, huge, huge amount. Um, so my very first memory of, of baton twirling um, was the first sort of session that I that I went to as sort of the, the introductionary uh, one so I, and I know it was the first because I remember at the end of it um, my mum asking me if I enjoyed myself and if I thought I might want to, to do it again and I remember saying yes I thought it was quite fun and, and quite enjoyable um, I, I remember it being in this I guess it was a school hall um, I remember there being either big windows or big curtains along one, well, one, along one side, and I'm fairly certain there was a stage at one end as well. But I could be like amalgamating lots of different um, places that I actually did baton twirling into sort of one, because there were a few different places that I, that I did baton twirling over the course of the time that I did it. Um, partly because I was with different troops, and I'd moved into different troops. Um, partly because um, I think sometimes at least one of the troops that I was with did move their practice hall at one point as well. Um, but I, you know, I don't have the, the clearest memory. I mean, it all kind of felt like the same troop a little bit to me. Um, because the whole reason I was introduced to the baton twirling in the first place is um, a friend of my parents, um, or friends of my parents, their, their girls were baton twirlers, twirlers, and every single time we moved troop, they moved troop as well, um, and we, we sort of moved into whatever one they sort of moved into. Um, so that's partly why, to me, it's hard for me to kind of distinguish when I was with different troops, um, because, you know, they were sort of like a constant, they were there, um, that were there, and they were both older than I am um, by, by a few years, but, you know, they were, they were nice girls, and I remember getting on with them, um, with them fairly well, and whenever we went away, um, for the nationals, we would always stay in a caravan with them, and sometimes there'd be um, one of the other girls in their parents um, or their mum with us as well. And but mostly it was just you know um, those two girls and their mum and my mum and, and me in the caravan together. Sort of from what I can remember. <laughs> um, I what I, uh, I sort of remember um, from this this very first session um, so is being given a, a baton to, to sort of um, practice with um, and being sort of taught a very specific move and, and how it's like mixing a bowl and you start off and then you, you sort of get it so like it's it's doing the thing that it's supposed to be doing and I can remember that I managed to get it to do that and, um, and it's one of those things that's just kind of like it's like one of the simplest things you could learn but it always kind of just stuck with me that that, that sort of first moment, that sort of was the very first thing that I was taught. Um, I, you know, I was never sort of fantastically great at it. I was, I was good. I was, you know, good in terms of like local competitions. You know, I was very good um, within our area, I just not nationally very good. <laughs> um, I think partly because I, I, I've not got the best, um, I wouldn't say I've not got the best depth perception necessarily. I don't have the best spatial awareness. Um, I think a little bit because of the high mobility that I've got, um, that, that would affect various things as well. Um, 
I know for like certain things, I mean, my fingers, my fingers are not flat, but this is my fingers, like for me, this is my fingers straight, that there's no tension in them. And you can sort of like, you can see that's not flat, that like, this is a bend still there. So I, it, it's because my fingers themselves, they do actually curve. So like, even if I sort of get it, so like that's level, that's still never going to be level because my fingers are bent. <laughs> Essentially, I'm hyperextended from this joint, and it's either a crooked finger or there's like no tension, and it's like, yeah. So, but the hypermobility was definitely a factor that kind of uh, both affected my sort of ability to perform um, and sort of, you know, how I looked. Um, so it, it would look like I wasn't doing things correctly, even though know, actually, in terms of what my body was wanting me to do that it was sort of correct um yeah <laughs> um so as i mentioned um i moved to troop a few times and there were lots of different uh practice halls that but i sort of ended up with in and, and ended up doing things in and um one of them so it's always a Saturday, almost almost always a Saturday where we had like our main training day, um, and then sometimes I would do like the evening sessions. So certainly, in my last trip, there were a lot of evening sessions, and that was sort of done um, more off the bat of some of the parents than necessarily, you know, the the troops were organising it. Although I think there must have been some organisation from the troops there as well. Um, but I know that uh, in this particular. It was like one, it was like, I, I feel like it was the second to last one, but it might have been um, a little bit sort of after that. Um, but uh, the, the practice hall was kind of near this, this fish and chips place and, um, you know, we'd have a little bit of money for our, for our lunches and we would go and we'd buy our lunches. And I remember I, I did love the, like, not so much the fish, but like the chips, like that kind of proper fish and chips with the, the proper salt and, pe uh, salt and vinegar on it. Yeah, I absolutely love that. I, I can almost remember how it tastes now. <laughs> it's had that kind of memory for me. Um, and then sort of like the last place that we, uh, that I can remember um, and the last trip that I was with, um, it was the uh, Central Park, uh, the sort of the big um, sports centre that, that we have locally. Um, and, you know, it, it was one of those where that the floor like it was a proper sports center big massive hall um and it was like where the local competitions were um, quite often would or yeah where the local competitions were, would end up being held because it was such a big space and you could have it cornered off for the different events correctly um and there's like proper changing rooms and stuff like that so yeah i, I <laughs> And this is kind of uh, ending up a little bit more rambly than I thought it would. Um, so I'll try to focus it a little bit again now. So some of my fondest memories or some of my clearest memories um, from doing the batting and twirling were doing the, the displays and doing the events. So there were lots of like fates and fairs and stuff like that when I was growing up. I feel like, they, like things like that don't really happen anymore. Um, but more than once, I remember having to do a long procession march. So we would start somewhere and we'd be part of this procession where it wasn't, you know, just baton twirlers. There were other things going on as well. Um, but we were essentially having to, to do this, what felt to me certainly a long journey from one location to, to another location where the fate or the fair or whatever it was we were heading towards was being, was being held. Um, and usually we would have to march and we'd have to do the baton twirling march, which is, you know, knee up level with your uh, with your hips, so leg along that way, and then legs, like, yeah, your foot was another right angle, oh, your, your lower leg was another right angle down from your knee, and your foot had to be sort of straight. <laughs> so, so, so nice straight lines sort of created, nice, nice, um, my angles sort of created, oh my god, was that tiring. I remember that being so, so tiring. Like, no matter how much I practiced it. And my mum got me to practice it a lot because it was one of those things where I would I would flag um, fairly easily. And it didn't seem to matter how, how much I practiced it. 
I, I always found it like hard, but I, you know, I found it increasingly harder as I got older, which, you know, seems kind of backwards because it was something I had to do so much. Um, and I did work out so much. But I think, you know, this is obviously pre the, the hypermobility diagnosis and hypermobility can cause that kind of fatigue. Your, your, um, your muscles don't always uh, strengthen the way that they're supposed to. And in fact, they can weaken fairly easily. It's, um, it's one of the reasons why, yes, I benefit a great deal from doing um, physio exercises that you know work on certain muscles and strengthen certain muscles um but if i if i stop doing them or if i stop you know working on those muscle groups um not like it, it, it's like the work just goes away fairly quickly um so it's a choice of you know trying to decide you know what things i i, I do keep up with and what things i don't keep up with um and you know how I build things up and you know stuff like that and back then because I didn't have the hypermobility diagnosis and I didn't know that I was working with anything you know, I mean I mean they, they were aware that I was bendier than I should be um and, and in certain aspects and you know the, 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 you know, definite kind of awareness that you know my body wasn't necessarily working in the way that it was supposed to work but the, the idea that I might have something that was making me more tired certainly didn't occur to anybody, uh, certainly not me, certainly not my mum. So I remember marching being so tiring and uh, one of the ones I, I remember particularly, I mean, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't quite so bad when we, when we had like the baton marches, um, certainly if it was like straight arms or if it was like, swinging arms. Um, and then the, the other one, no, well, that could get a bit tiring. Um, I remember this one sort of procession of march that, that I was in, where I was having to shake the pom-poms, and that's something else. That's really, really tiring. I mean, bear in mind, you're talking about somebody who's like eight. Uh, <laughs> eight, and you wouldn't normally have to do it for that length of time. Um, anyway, but, you know, I flagged a lot more than, than a lot of the other girls did. Um, for, for a lot of these kind of things and you know that does some some of that does come down to the fact that you know I was undiagnosed with my hypermobility back then and I was trying to push my body in ways that it wasn't necessarily unable to go in those directions and wasn't necessarily but I was building up the strength wrong um because I wasn't aware that you know actually trying to do things at the speed that everybody else was doing them um wasn't necessarily the right way for me to gain the strength that I needed in order to be able to do it myself. But you know, it, 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 hindsight is twenty twenty. It really is. Um, but yeah, I, I remember you know that bit would always be really really tiring. But I used to like doing displays, whether it was you know showing off a team routine or if it was doing like little demonstrations um, and stuff like that. I, I I used to really enjoy that because. I, in a lot of ways, I like performing. Um, so it kind of makes sense that half of my degree is in drama when you think about it like that. I mean, even like at school, I, I loved like being in school plays. I loved being in front of an audience, not so that I didn't get nervous. Um, but, you know, being, you know, doing doing something that was kind of a performance at competition level, which a lot of that and twirling is just a performance at competition level um, when you actually get into the, the competitive side of it. Um, there, there's something about that that is just, you know, uh, it, it, it kind of instills that sort of confidence into you. It's, it's a different type of performance. Either there are less people sort of watching you, but you are being judged more harshly than you would be if you were doing a school play. So the idea that later on I was kind of fine going up in front of an audience and, you know, read, you know memorizing lines and doing that kind of stuff. Um, the fact that I loved performing I very much think kind of comes from from that sort of um, those sorts of experiences where you know I was performing on on a competitive level um, and doing you know sometimes quite uh, quite intricate routines um, and having to remember all that stuff and, and trying to get it right and trying not to be too disappointed in myself if I made mistakes um, because one of the things 
that my mum was very good at making me making me feel, and, and this is something I've said to her recently because I, I, I didn't realise that she she worried that I she might have given me the opposite impression, but she always made me feel like it was okay um, if I didn't get things perfectly, if I didn't win, as long as I'd done my best. Um, she always made made sure that you know as long as I felt like I'd done my best, you know that that was okay. That you know that was that was good enough. Um, wasn't good enough necessarily for the trip that I was with, but it was good enough for her. And she was very good at installing that fe feeling into me that it was okay to fail. That it was okay not to be perfect at everything. Um, you know, as long as you were having fun and enjoying yourself, and as long as you, you did your best, then you know that's that's what mattered. That's that was the important bit. And um, it was okay to lose. It was okay to, to not be perfect. And you know, I'm, I'm very much, I'm very grateful for that lesson. Um, certainly, given the fact that a lot of my friends were not taught that lesson, and were actually probably taught the opposite lesson by their parents, and it it struggles. Um, it struggles. <laughs> it's caused them to struggle with a lot um, later on in their lives, where they are very perfectionist where they are very concerned about you know what their parents will think of certain decisions that they make where they are very hung up on the idea that if they don't get it right the first time then it's a disaster and you know I'm very very grateful that my parents gave me the opposite experience to that um, and, and instilled me with the, the opposite values that, okay, you've made a mistake, you haven't done as well as you thought you did, but you can learn from that and you can grow from that and you can be better next time. And you can, um, there are always ways that you can improve. There are always things that you can do to, to turn the situation around. Um, a, a failure is not a failure, it's a learning experience. And I, I very much feel like, you know, that experience I had with, with baton twirling not only sort of installed a certain level of confidence into me um, in terms of being able to perform in front of a crowd and, and, you know, as an introvert, that is something that sometimes you do kind of need to do, especially in the industry that I'm, I'm working in, where it's very customer focused and very customer facing, um, you do sometimes have to sort of put on a bit of a performance in order to get through the day. <laughs> Um, but you know the the fact that you know I was given that sort of a little bit of, of, of confidence, not just in terms of being able to to, to sort of function in front of a crowd and in front of people, um, but also to know that failure is not you know the big devastating thing that it that it can you know be to some people, but actually no, it's it's a chance to learn, it's a chance to um, Reevaluate what you're doing. It's a chance to find ways of improving yourself, and and you know, it, it's it's just a success waiting to happen. It's it's a stepping stone towards better things. It's not you know the end of the world, and yeah, that's very much what I. I mean, there there, well, there are lots of other things in my life that you know kind of gave me that as well, but I I very much think. Having that one thing where it was very focused on the idea of okay, you might fail this time, but you know, if you do this, this, and this, if you work on it, if you practice a bit more, you can get better, and the next time you will do better. And you know, I I did do better. You know, I, I did win win certain competitions. Um, well, not necessarily like all the competitions, but certain you know, certain certain of my performances. Um, I, I, you know, I, I did really well, and I, I did come first, and I did, you know, get, I do have the, the medals and trophies and certificates to prove it. <laughs> um, so, you know, it, it is something that I did sort of take to heart, which is, you know, the idea that nobody can get things perfect the first time, but failing isn't. Um, isn't a, a bad thing, it's just a chance to learn, it's a chance to go, okay, this is where your weaknesses are, let's work on that, and, and then maybe next time you'll do better, and, you know, the proof of that is that I did do better, and, you know, I, I did win, and there, there are some things that I'm, you know, some certain routines that I'm really, really proud of, and, and can remember, and, you know, I, could, I probably couldn't do them right perfectly now, but then, 
because I practiced them over and over and over again and I learned from every single mistake I made um, and did it, you know, it, there is a certain level of pride that you can kind of take from the hard work and the, and the dedication and the understanding that, you know, that's what, that's what you need um, in order to sort of do your best and, and to, to, to get the rewards that you kind of want from it, whether it's just the satisfaction that actually this, time, this particular time you did the routine, the best that you could do it, and okay, maybe you still didn't win, but you did it the best that you've ever done it. Sometimes that's enough, you know? Sometimes that feeling that you've mastered this thing that you've been working so hard at is enough. Um, at least it is kind of for me. <laughs> Again, it is, it's all down to that, that sort of fact and that sort of idea that as long as you, you've done your best and you've, you've had fun and you know, you've, you've gained something out of it, even if it's sort of a, a failure in terms of whether or not you've won, it's still something that you've done that is worthwhile and it's it's still a learning experience and it's still something that you can gain positivity out of. You know, um, you don't need the rest of the world to, to give you the sense of fulfillment if you can give it to yourself. Um, okay, so I managed to get some <laughs> less less story driven, more kind of anecdotal, I guess. Um, so 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 so. Um, I legitimately have not decided what the next vlog is going to be about yet. I want to say it's going to be another never rating one, um, partly because I have uh, now started the process of publishing the colours I see. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> I was about to say by which I mean and then tell you guys like exactly where, where I am with it, but I'm like, no, no, I'm not going to do that. Um, so that's like really, really exciting. Um, and I'm thinking, you know, the next one should be on the Neverating stuff again, but at the same time, I'm like, I've done so much on the Neverating stuff this year, you know, and I'm, I'm not sure that's necessarily the best thing to do next. Um, so it's either going to be about the Neverating stuff or it's going to be another story time type vlog. Um, I really haven't decided yet. And once again, I'm only going to film the one right now because I know I've got a day where I can film the next one ahead of um, ahead of it going out, uh, ahead of me actually needing it. And I may at that point then, then film too. Um, I'm kind of doing this slightly later in the day than I would normally, hence it being slightly lower light. And I'm a bit worried if I film the next one now, um, either I'm going to have to turn the light on part way through and then like completely change the composition or it's going to just get darker and darker and you guys are not going to be able to see me. Um, I, yeah, I'm, I'm doing this slightly later in the day than I would normally because I had a few bits and pieces that I needed to finish and the internet was not being very cooperative earlier. Um, <laughs> so I had to sort that out as well. Um, so I was just like, I need to film this today because I don't, I, yeah, I, I could film it like the day before it needs to be, you know, but in, I actually need to have it, but I need to film it and edit it and that's a lot of work. Um, so I'd rather sort of film it now and then, you know, worry about the rest later, um, which is what I'm doing, uh, which is why it kind of is a bit annoying that I haven't decided what the next vlog is. Um, I'm waffling quite a lot. I'm waffling quite a lot. I'm sorry. Uh, so the next one will either be more stuff about Neverator, which I'm sure you guys are looking forward to, or it will be another story time, which I'm sure you guys are looking forward to probably a little bit more. <laughs> Just, just because I spent so much of this year talking about the liberation stuff. <laughs> but to be fair, you know, I need to do the self promotion type thing and, you know, yeah. All right, okay, so I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. I hope you're looking forward to whatever the next one will be, and I will see you guys next time. See ya. <laughs>